I am Mike Stanton. It's April 22nd. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Grant Dewey from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Uh, Grant, thanks for taking some time in what uh, continues to be a busy, volatile week in the market. Uh, this week, we saw another 20 basis points of uh, higher yields on uh, munis, both in the 10-year and the 30-year. And in fact, the 30-year uh, MMD yield last night uh, exceeded the yield on uh, U.S. Treasuries, uh, over 100% ratios uh, between munis and Treasuries. That's historically a sign of uh, real value in the market. There have been a couple of hints of that. Uh, we saw an article in Barron's last week suggesting that maybe munis are, are getting to the point where the value exists. What's your take? Thanks, Mike. But I think a lot of it is, you know, we continue to see outflows of uh, pretty significant uh, each week. So this week it was three and a half billion, 10 straight weeks. There's only been two weeks uh, year to date where the flows have not been negative. So uh, up to 25 billion total. And so that just puts a lot of pressure on a, um, you know, on a relatively narrow buying base, which are, you know, mutual funds are, are really the the big buyer in our market. So there's been a lot of uh, a lot of need for liquidity. Uh, there's been uh, you've had underperformance, you know, in the muni asset class as a result. So I think we have started to find our footing here a little bit, but it's been uh, you know a very difficult uh, couple months for the market. I'm uh, never accused of excessive optimism, but let me take a try at that. Uh, last week was the last week of tax season. Historically, uh, muni investors do sell a lot of muni holdings to, to pay their tax bills in the middle of April. Going forward, is there any uh, hope that maybe those outflows will be more muted? Or do you think that's really related to people getting sticker shock when they see their statements coming in and seeing uh, absolute uh, total return losses? Yeah, I, I think it's a combination. I mean, uh, certainly if you're if you're watching uh, performance on your diversified high-grade municipal fund, it's coming in at 10% or more um, year to date. That's something that people are not used to seeing. And so, you know, probably at the exact time you should be holding and, and maybe adding, I think the tendency is to um, sort of think we're in like a prolonged uh, inflationary period. And so, um, so out they come, but also some of that could be uh, tax harvesting, um, and, uh, you know, and going back, I think, at least into the near term, some of the short term ETFs have been seeing inflows. So I think people are kind of parking money there. This will, you know, when we get a little bit more stability, I think on the on the long end, just rates generally, um, you know, as munis are prone to do, I think the snapback is going to be, uh, you know, pretty, pretty swift. Um, and uh you know, uh, so Chairman Powell yesterday, you know, continues kind of his more uh, hawkish pivot, um, but, you know, endorsing two 50% rate increases. And so, um, you know, he's saying, he talked about the labor market as being unsustainably too hot. So uh, they're definitely, um, we're going to see kind of a front loaded Fed policy. And I think that's kind of a polite way of saying that maybe they got a little bit behind the curve. And so, uh, until until the market feels a little bit more comfortable, I think we're going to continue to bounce around here. That obviously had uh, very negative effects for the stock market yesterday. Uh, what, what did you hear from people in the muni market? Were they uh, surprised by that? Um, I, I think that uh, it, they, it, it certainly wasn't surprising. The Fed has been telegraphing the 50 basis point hike. I think the market really had been expecting probably both hikes. So the there hasn't been, um, it's, it's really... Kind of the yield curve you've got uh you know threes to thirties are inverted so so um i think it has kind of more impact on the curve than it does on you know just kind of the the long bond um in itself thanks uh, so that's great feedback let's really quickly talk about the new issue market it has still been muted uh, last week was the week coming back from the easter holiday volume was relatively low uh, i think it's about 120 million dollars of fam insured new issues anything to uh, speak of there yeah, so so I think next week we're looking at closer to nine billion. So that's going to be, I think, uh, more of kind of um, you know this the averages that we've seen for the last year or two. But um, you know we continue to see as the primary market uh, you know slows and and deals um, go week to week. Uh, you know we continue to see good opportunities in the secondary market for insurance. So there's still a lot of demand. I think in periods like this, it kind of shifts. Um, you know, between primary and secondary. So there's still, we're still seeing, uh, it's, it's a great environment for bond insurance with all the volatility.
Yeah, and just one of the highlighted deals uh, to talk about last week, uh, BAM insured about $20 million for the village of Oaklawn, Illinois. Interesting there was there was another, I think, $60 million. Uh, the village had hoped to sell on a refinancing with the higher rates. The uh, savings target they were looking for wasn't achievable, so they just sold the new money portion there. Um, they did that ahead of the fact that uh, the state of Illinois was upgraded by uh, Moody's last week, uh, following an upgrade from S&P uh, in the middle of last year, uh, as uh, Governor Pritzker and the legislature there have uh, taken steps to stabilize the state's finances. So we'll see how that uh, impacts the market going forward. Perhaps uh, the higher state context will, uh, will allow some of the villages to uh, achieve their savings targets uh, going forward. But uh, just a reminder that beyond the day-to-day -day market swings, uh, the market's always uh, reacting to credit and keeping an eye on some of the longer term uh, trends. So thank you for your time uh, today, Grant. Uh, we'll let you get back to the desk and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Mike.